questions can be asked from this unit. So we must be prepared thoroughly for this unit. And today we are discussing the third topic, which is Oriental, Conventional and Non-Conventional Learning Programs in India. So as you all know, you might have seen the syllabus. This is the syllabus for uh, the 10th unit for paper one. And you must be waiting. Many might have seen this as a part of their syllabus, but they do not know what it means. So today we are looking at this unit, the third topic of this unit, conventional, non-conventional and oriental learning programs in India. Okay. So let me know if the screen is visible to you all. What is oriental learning? Pro learning? See, oriental learning is this the learning that is devoted on indological studies okay so you have this we have two types of culture eastern culture and western culture nowadays we are following the western culture but to preserve the eastern culture what the indian culture is the teachings of our gurukul system that disappeared when britishers came to india that system di disappeared and those very famous universities like Nalanda, which is in Bihar, and Akshashila, which is in parts of Pakistan now. So, these universities, they vanished. So, we had to find a way so that we can preserve this knowledge, the kind of knowledge that was given in the ancient era. That ancient knowledge and wisdom to revive. Revive means something vanishes to bring it back okay and preserve means to keep it safe so oriental learning is studies devoted to indological studies indological means related to indian culture okay all the aspects of indian culture what is oriental learning learning related to indian culture because gurukul system disappeared universities like nalanda and takshashila they vanished so we had to bring a new system which could help preserve this ancient knowledge and wisdom that our country had this gurukul system was a beautiful system in india where practical knowledge was given to children and uh, students but Nowadays, our traditional method is not as effective as Gurukul system. So, to preserve this system, we have introduced Oriental learning. In the 19th century, the Western scholars, they are responsible for this revival. So, not the Indian people did not revive this. The Western scholars, they studied all the Indian culture and found out what is so amazing about the Indian culture? So we have certain institutes that deal with oriental studies. Okay, let's read this. The work of these institutes consisted chiefly in collection and collating rare manu manuscripts in the oriental language. So the ancient language that the Indian culture used, Prakrit and Sanskrit, that language without editing them and publishing them without translation and explanatory notes. So that knowledge to preserve them, we this task is responsible to oriental institutes. Where and when such publications are possible, manuscripts and other collected materials are preserved by using modern and scientific devices. So what is the task of these institutes to preserve that ancient writings? And without translation as it is, not editing them and preserving is the task of oriental institutes. So this is some list of oriental institute, Adhyan Library and Research Center, Asiatic Society, Bhandarkar Oriental Research Institute, 
गंगाना झा केंद्र संस्कृत विद्यापीठ सो दीज आर वेरियस ओरिएंटल लर्निंग इंस्टीट्यूट इन इंडिया यू कैन हैव अ लुक एट दिस इंस्टीट्यूट इन एग्जाम दे कैन आस्क विच ऑफ द फॉलोइंग इज नॉट एन ओरियंटल इंस्टीट्यूट ओके इस सच अ क्वेश्चन कम्स यू शुड नो देम्स ऑफ सच इंस्टीट्यूट ओके एंड द डिटेल्स ऑफ सच इंस्टीट्यूट इज प्रेजेंट इन द नोट्स फ्रॉम ग्लोबल ऑनलाइन यूनिवर्सिटी इफ यू वोड लाइक टू रीड दम यू कैन कॉन्टेक्ट अस ऑन व्हाट्सएप एंड यू कैन गेट ऑल द इंफॉर्मेशन रिगार्डिंग दीज इंस्टीट्यूट वन बाय वन then we have conventional learning so conventional learning is that kind of education which we have been using from a long time it is also called c learning okay conventional learning is also called like like we use we say e learning e learning is when we are using internet and the modern technology for education that time it's called c learning and when we are using conventional method what is the conventional method that you and me have used we go to school there is a teacher standing in front of us she is teaching and we are listening to the lecture the conventional learning is face to face learning okay it is also called as back to basics this term is important in ugc net 2020 they had asked a question which of the following was true about conventional learning so there was one statement as back to basics brick and mortar classroom facility so these were different terms that were used and you had to mark option 1 2 and 3 okay so c learning refers to long established customs what customs where we go to school there is a particular curriculum that the teacher uses to teach it is refer it also refers to conventional education within brick and mortar classroom facility facility brick and mortar means in normally in classroom it is made up of bricks so that is why the name has come brick and mortar facility conventional education what it is known as it is known as back to basics it is also known as c learning there is face to face communication and this is a teacher centered method okay this is a teacher centered method it is a traditional teaching in which instructions instructors and students are involved by interacting in a face to face manner okay in the classroom also the teacher and the students are present at the same time okay these instructions initiate discussions in the classroom and the focus is to know what is in the book okay whatever is in the textbook and notes that has to be studied it also focus on memorizing to memorizing means whatever is written you just have to learn it also the main aim of such learning is to pass the examination there is not always a practical purpose of this in, this kind of learning for instance they uh, not necessarily if you study this it is going to be used in your school in your real life that is conventional learning conventional learning is what we have been using from a long time it is called back to basics traditional education conventional learning is also called c learning it is also referred as brick to mortar brick and mortar classroom facility there is face to face interaction and the main motive is to learn what is there in the textbook and notes right so example of conventional learning is um, what we have the schools that we have and uh, normally the universities that we go to for studies those are examples of conventional learning now one is non conventional learning program so non conventional learning programs are those which are which do not have happen at the same time the teacher and student need not present at the same time okay for instance um if you are uh, non conventional could be if you are buying if you are starting a distance learning course right so there they give you uh, cds they give you cds to study 
the teacher had made that lecture in january but you are watching in july so the time and space between the student and teacher is not the same okay so teaching learning activities is offered other than on campus other than on campus means off campus and fixed time means not at fixed time means different time for example evening learning distance learning vocational studies skill based courses online courses okay so here the main aim of conventional learning is to bring back those students who have not been able to complete the studies okay evening learning is there are so many adults who because of family responsibility they are not able to go to college so evening learning is they can attend college after school distance learning means those courses which there is the there is distance between the institute and the students they can buy courses they can give exam whenever they want for instance ignu ignu is an example of distance learning so if you uh, want to do a course from ignu you pay the fees they give you study material they send you to their house whenever you want you can study you just have to go and give the examination vocational study means there are so many people who do not have particular skills okay just if you are studying till class 12 that does not give you any kind of skill if you want some skill for example there is a sewing course okay stitching ka course hote silai ka so in vocational studies they bring a sewing machine they teach you how to sew so that you can become a fashion designer or you can uh, sew clothes and the main aim is so that you can stand up on your feet you can earn main aim is to bring that practical purpose in life not just memorizing knowledge or education doing something that gives you livelihood okay vocational studies skill based courses is also same okay then online learning online learning is when you are using internet to studies whether it is used youtube or other courses that is online learning so the non conventional learning also includes distance education here teaching and learning arrangements are in a manner that learner and the teacher have separate space and time okay here the teachers and learners are not physically present okay physically present is in conventional learning okay see learning but non not in non conventional learning transaction of the curriculum is affected by the means of specially designed material okay transaction of curriculum means how it is going to be taught it depends on what you are using for instance if you are using print if you are using hard copy to study or sometimes you are using cd or dvds to study or the internet or the world wide web www in distance education technological medium replaces the interpersonal communication interpersonal communication is what it is face to face okay so face to face is replaced by the modern technological medium conventional classroom based education it is being replaced communication between institutes teacher and learner is through electronic media okay maybe they are sending some sms of when is the exam or when is that lecture or some there is a chat box where you can talk to the teacher and discuss queries or you can drop emails or there is particular portals of uh, various universities where you can ask queries okay so that is distance education what is the main objective of distance education so it provides effective alternative path to wider opportunities in india and especially in higher higher education india is such a big country our population is like more than 135 crores so you see it is not practically possible to provide education conventional education to each and every person okay to each and every youth in the country 
their distance education comes up here this provides wider opportunities all the people whosoever wants whosoever is interested they can do there are so many people who um, because of uh, some physical issues or some family issues are not able to continue for them distance education is very helpful it is efficient and less expensive e efficient how because it is flexible whenever you are having time you can study there is no regular classroom in this and it is less expensive you all know whenever you go for admission into a university it will cost you very high fees there going to the institute attending classes all those is very expensive also for people who are from a rural area if they want to go to the city to study for them it will be expensive if someone who is studying in the living in the city for them going to a university is simple but a person who is from a you know a very um a very small town or village where there is no institute for them it is it will be expensive to go to the city and gain education for them distance education is very helpful it also provides facilities to all qualified and willing persons okay so this i have already explained those whoever is willing for them they can go and enroll for a course in distance education to provide opportunities of academic pursuits to educated citizens willing to improve their standard of knowledge okay so there are some people who have done engineering right they are working in an mnc but you all know that if you want to succeed in life you always have to grow so for them if they take a mba course so what will do it will add a feather to that right if they send a resume to another company and then they say that they have mba in it so that will be they will be given a higher weightage so distance education is for people who want to improve their standard of knowledge to provide education facilities to those who look upon education as a lifelong activity so there are people who just want to go on learning They they take it as a lifelong activity, not like okay I have done twelve, then I have done graduation and PJ. That's it. But there are people who want to do so many other courses because they take education as a lifelong process and not a simple end after doing PJ. For them, distance education is very helpful. What is open learning? So open learning is is a kind of philosophy. It means lesser the restriction, higher the degree of openness. okay the open learning system aim to redress social and educational inequality okay redress means to fight social and educational inequalities and to offer opportunities not provided by conventional colleges and universities okay so there are people who are not able to go to normal institutes conventional institutes for them open learning is very useful here one question is the first open institute okay the first open university is in india it is b r ambedkar open university first it was called um, andhra pradesh open university but then it was later renamed as b r ambedkar open university it it came up in 1982 okay so this is the first open university you must remember this this question was asked in net examination when did the first open university come up okay and the very famous example is another igno indira gandhi national open university okay so that's it this is what is oriental conventional and non conventional learning programs before ending the session i would like to tell you for your ugc nt and net preparation exam you have nearly 60 less than 60 days left so for them you have we have prepared for you mock test these mock test are designed in a way that you can attend these test as many times as you want okay whenever you want to give the test you can give it how many number of times you want to give the test you can give we also provide you solution pdf to this test 
This test consists of you have 20 previous years papers. You have 10 unit specific test and you have 10 full 30 full syllabus test. Okay. So you have 10, 20 previous years paper, 10 unit specific test and 30 full syllabus test. You will also be getting ebook where you will have complete notes on each and every unit. There will be video course through th theory and MCQs and there are additional 1000 MCQs. Here, this new batch that has been started recently. Here, we provide you these mock tests daily at 6 p.m. And after the examination, we provide you PDF at 7 o'clock. So what you can do is you can analyze you can give this test multiple times also. When you give the test, you can read the PDF and analyze where you are making mistake. If you look at the questions again, if you give multiple tests, you see, okay, I am making mistake always at higher education. At higher education, I'm losing marks. So what you do is you study this topic more and then you can increase your chances of clearing UGC and TNI. Okay, so if you are interested, you can join our WhatsApp group. The number is this. The fees is just 999. In our WhatsApp group, you can put up queries. If you have doubts, you can post it. You can write it down and we will be answering as soon as possible. We also have our Global Online University app where you can subscribe for three months if you are, are preparing for the coming examination. But people who are preparing for the coming as well as the next examination, you can subscribe the six months package. Okay, So we will be meeting tomorrow where we will be studying professional, technical and skill-based education. Then we will be going on to value education and environmental education, policies, governance and administration. This is the topic that we will be looking at. If you have any doubts and queries, do write it down in the comment section and let us know how was the session. So, we will meet tomorrow. Bye.